Welcome in everyone to more challengers here on the Sorcerer Network. Haunted House is out. So what do we do instead? Well, I think Vendor and Gangster are the best cards here. And I think we just go with the best cards. <clears throat> Seems like a great strategy. Um, there's a temptation to go Gangster Movie Star, but um, I think the Movie Star has diminishing returns in that it's all centered around having newcomers. And usually I like to get rid of newcomers at some point. So... The nice thing about the early game with the Gangster is um, it comes out with more attack. Um, so that's, I can take down some more powerful stuff. Okay, so this person takes Shape shape Shifter Stable Boy. See, like, this is nice because that can take down a three-powered thing. Um, now, they could have taken something else because of the Shape Shifter. So that's something to watch. Well, that's a bummer. Would like to have not use three cards to take down that one card. Okay, so they did take double Stable Boy. Um, I lose this? Yeah, I lose this. That's okay. Um, okay, Juggler, Makeup Artist, Makeup Artist. Okay. The Juggler is a little bit annoying, but the two Makeup Artists, Makeup Artist and Merman. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Totally fine. Um, so let's go here. All right, I like a juggler here. I mean, double talent also is interesting, but uh, juggler is just, just better. I think I don't want to get seduced into double talent. It, on paper, it seems good, but it actually isn't. I'm going to redraw for exactly that. I was trying to hit another vendor. Because now this really becomes, and I'm going to remove the, um, whatchamacallit, the talent. Because um, now this Funfair build becomes very, very interesting. Um, and then the Gangster is something we can get rid of as well. Um, newcomers we're going to want to phase out. Um, but if we can hit, there's a lot of great B cards that we can hit. Clairvoyant, Mime, uh, even like the Pyrotechnician isn't uh, like unplayable. Um, it's a four-power card that gets buffed by the vendors, so... And it can get you some passive fans, which can uh, mean something. So, really, really uh, solid start here. Um, kind of... the the This one, uh, Slagathor, um, is... The double stable boy start is a really, really good... Uh, like, that. that's... Un, don't count that start out. Uh, you know, it's, it's, okay, juggler. So I want to go top, second, third, I think. I don't know. I really just want the vendor on top. Not that it has that much to hit as of this point, besides the other vendor, but some value is better than no value. Okay, so a little bit of an overkill on, you know, getting the gangster out of here, but, you know, it's fine. Um... Okay, so the good news is we just have to take this down, uh, which we should be able to because I have the vendor that will get buffed, and then they'll run out of bench space. Careful when you don't have any way to get rid of things about your bench space, especially in a game with the haunted house stuff is usually how you can get rid of bench space. Um, I think we go with the A cards here. Yeah. Because I want Pony. I don't really want a Clown. Even though I know that gets passive fans. But, well, I guess, do I grab Double Gangster here? No, I'm looking to get rid of that. I'm going to redraw. Oh, what a what a great decision. <laughs> uh, and then we can... Uh, let's get rid of the Dog. Because the Pony replaces the Dog. And let's just get rid of a Newcomer. Um, uh, and again, this gangster can can go away long term. But now I definitely want um, fun fair cards because, um, and I probably just want my deck to be all fun fair things because all of them are going to get buffed. Rubber ducks would be great um, in this build. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the B realm that we can hit. Mimes, clairvoyance, 
uh, rubber ducks. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. Awesome. Good start. A little bit of an overkill, but at least it's one card to take the flag. And it held up for two. Um, okay, so top, second, bottom. This is great. Um, one powered things, I'm in. This is a little bit of a bummer, but um, not a super big bummer because getting two vendors in the bin is delightful, especially because now this is sitting at five power. Um, yeah, that's nice. That's very nice. going on down here okay so this person did get a mime that's not great because i want that i guess clairvoyance are more what i want though i don't know there's a lot that i can hit all right there's my third vendor there defending with four power is always great Okay, um, that's a little bit of a bummer um, because that loses us the match. Otherwise, we would have won. No matter. Um, what that means is that we're like we have a deck that can win just arbitrarily because the cowboy hit. We lost. Whatever. So I got two people going like the one power build. That's good for us. Three stable boys. This is this can be this could be a dangerous build. Um, could be. Uh, yeah, we're going B cards now. Um, I don't want any of those. However, I do want a Rubber Duck and a Clairvoyant. Um, and so now we can get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to keep the champion, um, but this is... let's. We are now you know, making our deck with three vendors. We want every single card to be the fun fair to be able to just buff everything. So, I mean, really we're hoping for vendors coming out first, but the nice thing is the clairvoyant allows us, if it takes the flag, to put a vendor on top. Juggler allows us to look at the top three cards and have some manipulation of the deck. So like we shouldn't have, and just in general, uh, you know, we have eight cards total and three of them. So nearly half of our cards are the cards that we need to come out first. So just probability wise, it's, likely that we will hit what we want. Yeah, I think it's nice that two people have gone the the one power build. I like this. Now this person, that's a great card to come out first because the attack on attack does absolutely nothing. And that's a great card to come out first for us as well. Anytime a vendor comes out first, we are happy. Would like that to come out later, but still defending with six power right now is not a, you know, not terrible. Yeah, that's, see, I want that card. <laughs> Uh, did not want that card to come out uh, that soon, but it only took us two cards. However, with the four cards, we are already halfway through our deck. And I know that this person has three stable boys, um, so that's not nothing. But now we will have all of our vendors in the in the bin here, um, which is nice. Um but I just think as of right now, this person's going to be very difficult to take down. And all the rest of the cards in our deck get buffed. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Because <laughs> the clairvoyant doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, so like we're going to have some high-powered things. Like We're going to have some high defense here. That's annoying. Um, I mean, we'll be able to defeat it. But <laughs> it's still annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, just this is a very like streamlined deck here. Um, like three shapeshifters, three stable boys. Oh, and a pony. 
Um, so now the question is, can six, can't have that many cards. Wow, okay, nice. Yeah, this is a very good deck. Um, taking away my mime and my pony. But the nice thing about this this build is that there's so much stuff in the B set that you can hit. He took, why did you take a rubber duck? What? What? Are people just taking stuff so I can't take it? That's annoying if they are. Um, I mean, the good news is we're still getting it, but my goodness. Pyrotechnician isn't unplayable, and so we're going to take it. Um, and then I probably don't want any of this, so um, I'm just going to grab a director, and then we're going to remove both of these cards. So now everything is fun fair. Um, this gets some uh, possibility of passive fans. I'm, I'm loving this. It's not like the best deck, but because it has three vendors in it, it, it has a baseline of goodness. Really just the only thing that would be horrible is if like all three vendors are at the bottom of the deck. But again, just probability-wise and because of the juggler and the clairvoyant, it's just less likely. Alrighty. Come on. All right. That's not the best card to come out. That's a great card to come out first. That's also a great card to come out. Ooh, the fact that this held up for four cards, very lucky for us. That is that is wonderful. Wonderful start to this. What's going on down here? Okay, all right. This person's having a rough start. Slagathor. Alrighty, there's the clairvoyant. Okay, that's nice. So this is where, again, like, absolutely sucks that, um, you know, the clairvoyant comes out. But now I can put the vendor right on top. And so I at least will have one vendor. So, yeah, we're putting that on top. Confirm. And that vendor will be able to take down this. Um, whatever comes out next, which is another vendor. Really great. We'll be able to take down that. There's no more newcomers. Okay, the UFO could prove difficult. However, um, the fact that they have no more bench space is really great. And the fact that that jester was not able to take down my rubber duck is really great. And now we just have to take down the mime and we are fine. There we go. And I think we stick with the two B cards. There's the Pyrotechnician. And we redraw and we get nothing. So we'll take, I don't know, in case someone decides this blacksmith is going to be good. So totally fine. Nothing like this is a pretty easy, like we're just looking for fun fair cards. <laughs> like even these Pyrotechnicians that are, you know, uh, just in com like in comparison, not as great as the Clairvoyant or the Rubber Duck are still fine in this build. <laughs> like they're they're definitely not bad. So just, you know, my my in, initial like adding up on points here. I I think we're in the driver's seat. Um I mean, we definitely have to win. Um but I I think we can afford to like lose this next one and then win the seventh one if po like if we need to. So, um all right, let's do that. Oh, that is a great card to come out first. Um, okay, so here's the fun part about this, is we can put this on top. This is going to take the flag and then immediately stick it to the bench. That's where the cowboy is not as good. I mean, we don't get the value of it on attack, but, um, okay, yes to this, and then we can just grab those. Um... But the fact that um, it then buffs other stuff is still good. 
And now these pyrotechnicians will come out and will be with power six. We still haven't seen our rubber duck. That'll be at least a power of seven, depending on where the vendor is. Our cow, the second cowboy does not hit. That is very, very good. Ooh, okay. So that's interesting. The good news is that only took us two cards to take down. And now, um, because that puts something right on top, and it doesn't matter because they have, yeah, it, it, that's the downside of the villain. Or if it gets taken down, um, now you just run out of bench space. So, wonderful. What's going on down here? All right, this person took a submarine. Mime. Yeah, this this one power build is not nothing. Um, I just think it 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 really needs things to go exact. Like this deck is scary. I can't believe that that Slagathor went on such a uh, uh, losing streak here. Um, I think we just redraw. Um, I don't have three or fewer trophies. The hologram is interesting in this with how my opponents are playing because this puts the top card from the level B pile on top of their deck. I actually think with how my opponents are playing, they're playing really fast and loose with, um, and I'm going to remove this pony. They're playing really fast and loose with their how many cards they have. So I actually think having two of those and um, trying to like get like overpower my opponent's bench spots is actually is actually is actually better in this situation. Like the best that that pony was gonna be was six power, and that's if all three vendors were out where I can get the same thing. All right, so this is gonna be interesting. All right, that's great that we see that coming out. Ooh, love it, love it. Love that. What do they hit? I hope it's not something... The, the only downside of the hologram is that it could be something that helps them. But um, I have found more often than not, it doesn't. This is excellent. Because I don't think that, that my opponent had any knights. Um, and so that could uh, very much... Alrighty, so I want the Clairvoyant on top, and then I, I don't care. Because I want um, the Clairvoyant to bring the other vendor to the top. So yeah, this is now, this occupies a bench space. I mean, it does help buff the Stable Boy, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not really upset about that. And the Clairvoyant will be able to take this down. Okay. That is a very good on attack card. Um, so I want the vendor to move up here. Um, it's not going to be able to take this down in one card, so it is going to cost me an extra card. But that's okay. Yeah, like that's fine. Um, like the fact that's going to defend with six, and man, I gotta hope that. Man, that is this is a nasty deck. Um, now the good news is I have plenty of stuff in here that will be able to take this down with one card, and oh, he has that as well. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that is that is nasty. So yeah, the, so what do I hit? A comic character. Okay, here's the good news is I need this to to um, hold anyway. Um, and it uh, doesn't matter because the bench space. Uh, so, woo, that was close. Um, oh, so I kept Slagathor out of the... Um, out of the final with that. So that was unlucky for him. I think he had the second best deck, in my opinion. Um, this deck, I, I, I got very fortunate last time, but again, the double hologram, oh shoot, I don't want this in my deck. <laughs> I totally forgot that, that adds it to my deck. Farts. Um, okay, well, no matter. <laughs> oh. 
That's really funny. All right, so that's good because I doubt that he drew this. I doubt that he he is taking that with the cards that he has. A um, little bit unlucky that I'm not seeing my vendors here. <clears throat> Love it. Love that. Love that hit of inner. So I want vendor on top, that one second, and the rubber duck on bottom. Okay, there's the villain, which actually is pretty nice here because now I put another card on top. Um, now this is taking quite a lot of cards, and I might run out of bench space as well, um, especially with this. Uh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> We're gonna run out of bench space. Oh, <laughs> uh, I totally forgot that this comic character, um, like would would not. Oh, uh, we 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 beat him first. Oh, whew, okay. My mistake doesn't come back to haunt me. What a roller coaster there. So really, had we taken out this comic character, we would have like steamrolled him. So um, yeah, this rescue pod is is. Uh, well, I mean, that was what the villain put in, and then we were able to put this navigator. So yeah, we just we just like bench spotted, especially with the villain in there. That just helped us even more. So that's really, I'm souring a little bit on this card, unless you have ways to like get stuff on like off your bench. Because otherwise, it just is. Because it puts it right on top. If your opponent like has this, like the double hologram, you're just going to deck out just immediately. So, hey, if you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. And we'll see you next time.